Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game. A lot of you have requested uh, it's from the Tata Steel India Rapid Edition from Round 8 to Vidit Gujarati versus Wesley So and it features as you might have seen in the uh, thumbnail or maybe I'm going to put it in the title the greatest opening ever invented in chess that of course is the Evans Gambit and uh, what happens when you play it against uh, uh, someone like Wesley So who is a former world uh, official random champion so you know that uh, you know he really does really really well in, in wild and crazy positions and uh, trying uh, to pull off an Evans Gambit against someone of Wesley's caliber is, uh, well, uh, uh, ju just incredible. So let's dive straight into it. It's Vidit with the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. We have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to c4. The Italian game is on the board. We have bishop to c5, the Gioco Piano and now the strongest reply to the Gioco Piano. b4, of course, the Evans Gambit is on the board. And uh, as usual, we uh, challenge the Gambit by accepting it. That is the best way to do it. Bishop captures on b4. c3, we have bishop to a5 and now pawn to d4. I always mention when there's a uh, Evans Gambit game that I have made a video on the Evans Gambit. If you guys want to check it out, it will be the first link in the description below if you want to uh, try this as well. Uh, there we cover all sorts of lines and all of the retreats of the bishop, like bishop back to a5 to c5 to e7, even to f8. We even discuss d6, so uh, fun stuff. So d6, uh, even though the e captures on d4 is still the most popular move here, Wesley goes for pawn to d6. Everyone has their own favorite way of how to deal with the Evans Gambit. Queen to b3 now threatening bishop captures on f7 and queen to d7 defending. Uh, we have castles by uh, Vidit and now bishop to b6. This is a move that you have to remember if you're ever playing against the Evans Gambit or if you play the Evans Gambit because you will face this move. Freeze up the a5 square and of course this will attack your queen and the bishop and you will have to part with your light square bishop because this is just too strong for black to allow. So here at knight b to d2 we have knight to a5 attacking queen and bishop. Uh, queen back to c2 and now knight captures on c4. Knight captures on c4 now with tremendous pressure on that e5 pawn and queen to c6. Wesley knows how to play this. Uh, this is the absolute best way to uh, challenge this line. Uh, now you're attacking the knight and uh, you are forcing white to make some moves. Uh, and if, if you just try to defend it to keep the pressure, then bishop g4 and already black is uh, black should be just better. Uh, the, the white queen is stuck now guarding on f3 and also on c4. So after queen to c6, we have knight captures on b6, a captures on b6, and now white grabs back one of the pawns, captures, captures, and captures on e5, and now queen to a4. Wesley offers a queen trade. We have queen to d3 and now uh, there is a game where knight to f6 was played but here we have knight to e7 by Wesley and it is now as of move 15 that we have a completely new game so let's see how Vidit uh, deals with this he plays queen to g3 puts pressure on the g7 pawn and also if the knight moves the c7 pawn uh, might be uh, in some trouble. So uh, Wesley just castles and now rook to e1 first, uh, adding a defender to d4 pawn, bishop to e6 and now pawn to h4. Now Vidit has uh, a nicely placed queen on g3, the bishop can come into the attack, the knight is beautifully centralized on e5 and uh, the pawn wants to march all the way to h6. So hopefully you will also be able to bring the other rook into the game but for the moment it, it isn't really clear how, maybe at some point you're going to push c4 maybe you're gonna do some rook lifting uh uh, hard to say. So king to h8, of course Wesley wants to get uh, off of that g file and pawn to h5. Now of course h6, you do not want to allow white to play pawn to h6 and bishop to f4. Vida just continues developing. Rook to a5 uh, and now rook a to d1. Vida uh, gives up one pawn for some uh, active play on, on the king side. Wesley says all right, queen captures on a2 and now even knight to f3, remaneuvering the knight, offering another pawn. And okay, uh, since Vidit will capture on, on c7 and probably on b6, it's not a problem. Rook captures on a5, bishop captures on c7, uh, we have knight to g6 now and bishop captures on b6. The bishop will come to d4 to attack the black king, so the knight on g6 is um, uh, most excellently placed. So king to h7 and now bishop to d4. Now this knight can never move, otherwise queen to g7 is checkmate. So rook to e8 and now rook to a1, attack the queen, queen to c4, and now rook a7, going after the b7 pawn. If Vidit grabs this pawn, then the c 
pawn becomes a passed pawn and then white has um, uh, well just a huge advantage on the queen side so queen to c6 defending the b7 pawn and now rook a back to a1 the rook has really no purpose there once the the b7 pawn is defended and now bishop to d7 by wesley uh remaneuvering the pieces maybe making room for the rook to enter the attack also just putting pressure on that e4 pawn uh maybe bishop to c8 was a little bit more precise to uh, also defend the b7 pawn while you're at it but wesley feels that there is no need to, uh, for that so knight to d2 defending the e4 pawn and now rook to g5 by wesley now uh, playing pretty much uh, perfect moves here uh, it's very hard for for Vidit to now get out of this because he has all this pressure on the black king but with the knight on g6 there's just no way to get rid of it and now Wesley is starting to get some counterplay uh, with an attack against the white king and already if you play some weird move let's say play queen to d3 uh, just rook g2 and you can resign because after king captures knight f4 check your queen uh, will be lost so uh, Vidit plays the only move that uh, doesn't lose the game for him queen to h2 and now pawn to f5 by wesley here he wants to bust open the position here uh and now rook to a5 the only again good move for vidit now the pawn cannot move if you if you advance the pawn or capture or something just rook captures on g5 the h pawn is pinned uh so wesley just plays pawn to b5 and this is um uh, a moment where Vidit has to decide how to play this. It's a very, very complicated position. Many moves are possible. Like you could play c4, you could play f3 here, just try to defend the d4 pawn, which will weaken your king a little bit, but it might be uh, necessary. However, uh, Vidit played queen uh, rook to a7. Uh, he wants to play queen to c7, which you will probably see in the thumbnail. Uh, but uh, it, it does not work. F captures on e4 and now queen to c7. And yes, it's very nice. Queen uh, and rook on the 7th rank. The bishop also helping out with the attack against the g7 pawn. Uh, there's all, already the threat of queen captures on c6. Bishop captures and rook captures on g7. So it seems like uh, all is well and that he's basically just forcing a queen trade. However, Wesley has uh, such a spectacular uh, win here if he finds the correct continuation. Uh, which he did not in the game, uh, but that's where you guys come in. Feel free to pause the video here and win the game for Wesley uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, outstanding idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to e3. And now when you see it, of course, you immediately believe it uh, because uh, not only are you attacking the knight, not only are you attacking the df2 pawn, you're also threatening mate in one with queen captures on g2. And the only thing left for white to try here uh, is to trade queens, but even that is insufficient. Look at this. Queen captures on c6. Now you don't recapture, but rather you play e captures on d2. Now you're threatening a D captures on E1 with uh, with queening, and uh, there there's just nothing you can do. Uh, if you try to go for some checkmate and you allow Black to grab a queen, then uh, anything just King H2 and Knight to E5 now prevents any checkmates, and now White is getting checkmated. And of, of course, if you capture the Rook, then it's just an instant Knight to F3 check captures. Queen g1 check, king h3, and queen to h1 checkmate. So that, of course, doesn't work. Uh, so after e captures on d2, you're going to have to move the rook. Uh, there's no other way to do it. Uh, but now, I mean, again, anything is winning. Uh, you, you, you are defending the d2 pawn, but just a rook to e1 with check. And again, no, no, not a way to do it. If you capture, we get a queen into the game. If you play king to h2, uh, then rook captures on d1, and white is just not in time. If white plays queen captures on d7, then black has this beautiful rook to h1 with check. And as the rook covers the g file, you are forced to capture. If, if you weren't forced to capture, you might be able to survive because you are threatening checkmate. But after captures d1 queen, or, or even better, not d1 queen, a rook to h5 check first. And now after king to g1, d1 queen will be checkmate or if you block with the queen to try and give back some material again d1 queen and after king h2 just rook captures on h3 and that's pretty much it now you're just down too much material to try and play this so that's what was possible after queen to c7 and that's why uh, this game is uh, is uh, so spectacular but wesley missed it uh, this is a rapid game so of course you're not going to see everything knight to f8 was played wesley defended the, the the bishop on d7 and now with it successfully just traded down queen captures bishop captures bishop e3 attacks the rook rook to d5 and rook to c7 now 
uh, bishop to d7 the, the bishop is here nicely defended by the rook and rook to a1 now uh, we have knight to e6 and now rook to b7 uh Vidit still tries to get some sort of uh pressure sorry not rook to a7 uh first rook to b7 uh as the knight attacked the rook and now rook to d3 uh rook a to a7 bishop to c6 now attacking the rook and now you have to trade uh rook d7 captures captures and now they just trade down bishop d5 Knight captures an e4, king to g6, and now knight to d6, going after the b5 pawn. So rook captures on c3, knight captures on b5, and rook to b3 attacks the knight. And here they just trade off everything. Knight to d4, knight captures, bishop captures, and rook to b7, rook captures, bishop captures. And it was in this position on move 47 that uh, Wesley and Vidis resigned, uh, agreed to a draw as there is nothing more to be done here. It's equal material, uh, bishops are of opposite color, so there's nothing more to try here. So brilliant game by both of them. Uh, Wesley had it uh, in this moment after queen to c7. Had he found e3, it would be a spectacular victory for him. But the game ends in a draw, and it is uh, Vidit who joins the ranks of great men who have attempted the Evans Gambit on the highest level uh, and lived to tell the story. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank the Animated Chemistry Textbook, KGB Sellers, Ante Butikan, Zoltan Koskardi, and Benjamin Hauberger for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and everything else that happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.